Hello everyone, today we will discuss about a new topic body plethysmography. What do you know about this topic body plethysmography? What is body plethysmography? We will go into a little history. Starting in 1790s, Menzies, uh, he plunged a man into water in a hox shaped up to, his, up to his chin and they measured the rise and fall of the water with each breath. And with this type of body plethysmography, he determined the tidal volume. Basically, it is used to determine the lung volumes. And uh, over the 1800s, uh, Ed Edward, he devised a pneumometer. Okay, it was based on the Boyle Marriott law, which states that P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. And Arthur Du Bois, in 1956, he described the first functional whole body plethysmograph. It was based on the earlier studies done by Edward, and he made the critical observation that only a small respiratory effort need to be made after occlusion of the mouthpiece to derive an accurate representation of the pressure and the volume within the lungs. So, this is a... Uh, Du Bois et al. in 1956, he devised the first body plethysmograph and uh, which helped in the determination of the lung volumes and also the airway resistance measurement. So, the word plethysmograph, it is derived from the Greek word which means plethysmos, enlargement. Okay, the most significant advancement made by the uh, Du Bois was the measurement of the airway resistance. Okay, the major impediment to uh, an accurate measurement of the raw uh, airway resistance is the fact that the pressure in the alveoli cannot be measured directly. So, by comparing the uh, plethysmograph pressure and volume changes with and without a closed shutter, he showed how alveolar pressure could be accurately estimated, and this allowed him to measure the airway resistance. So this is, I will be explaining everything in detail, okay, this is a body plethysmograph, here is a computer attached which helps in the uh, calculation of the airway resistance as well as the lung volumes. So as we know, the, the lung volumes can be measured by spirometry like IRV, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume. What we cannot measure is the total lung capacity by the spirometry, okay and uh, residual uh, volume and uh, these volumes they are in turn uh, calculated by the plethysmograph and the functional residual capacity of course and it is used to, to the measurement of the non-mobilizable lung volume there are basically three types of body plethysmograph one is a pressure uh, plethysmograph in which the pressure remains constant Pressure varies, sorry, uh, while the volume remains constant. Volume plethysmograph in which volume varies and pressure remains constant and a pressure corrected flow plethysmograph. Lung volumes they are most commonly measured by two techniques. One is the body plethysmograph method and other is the closed circuit inert gas dilution method. The main indication in uh, for the for uh, this test is in patients with obstructive airway disease with poor compliance, obstruction is de determined by the airway resistance. It can be performed in normal breathing, okay, unlike the forced breathing maneuvers which is performed in PF, uh, in spirometry and it doesn't require patient cooperation. That's the main two important indications for use of body plethysmograph. And it helps in the distinction between restrictive and obstructive. Why do you say that? Because Spirometry provides only information uh, like a reduced vital capacity, okay? And we don't, we need to know the resid, uh, residual volume and the total cap lung capacity. Why? Because in restrictive lung diseases, okay, the vital capacity is decreased in view of the total lung capacity decreased. Whereas in obstructive lung diseases, vital capacity is decreased in increased RV. So, uh, in fact, uh, total lung capacity is not reduced. So the three markers, which uh, three lungs volumes, which we find during the body plethysmograph is uh, total lung capacity, functional residual volume, and uh, residual volume, functional residual capacity, and the residual volume. The usefulness is that total lung capacity it is a key index to confirm the presence of the restrictive ventilatory defect. 
FRC is the marker of hyperinflation. Marker of hyperinflation and changes in PV relationship of chest wall or lungs. And residual volume is the marker of gas trapping. RV by TLC, it reflects the poor gas mixing ratio and hence gas trapping. So what is the marker of hyperinflation? FRC. Total lung capacity, it helps in the uh, presence of restrictive ventilatory effect. Residual volume, a uh, gas trapping. RV by TLC, reflects the poor gas mixing ratio. There are various measures to uh, detect FRC. One is the multi-breath helium dilution method. Uh, second is the nitrogen. And third is the body plethysmogram. Because the best method, because it is the fastest and measurement of airway resistance. Disadvantage is that it is more expensive. So this is the body plethysmogram in which there is a mouthpiece uh, with the transducer which helps in the measurement of the pressure at the uh, mouth and also uh, transducer in the box which helps in the measurement of the uh, pressure in the box chamber and it is there is a shutter and it is connected outside um, this uh, box uh, is connected outside uh, to an amplifying and monitoring system and the box pressure is displayed on the x-axis mouth pressure is displayed on the y-axis or the oscilloscope okay as we discussed so how do you determine frc mm. patient is uh, seated comfortably in the box with a nose grip and asked to breathe quietly through the mouthpiece and at the end of quiet expiration the shutter is closed and the patient is instructed to pan gently against it the panning maneuver causes both mouth pressure and box pressure to change. Pressure measurement at the mouth provides an estimate of the alveolar pressure. A second pressure transducer measures the pressure swings within the body plethysmograph and uh, during the panning maneuver and estimates the volume change being applied to the system. When the shutter closes at the end expiration, that volume is the FRC but often is referred to as a VTG to indicate a body plethysmograph was used to measure the FRC. The measurements made are quick and very accurate. It must be kept in mind that this volume is measuring all the gas in the thorax, whether or not it is communicating with the uh, atmosphere. So in a patient with emphysema and large non-communicating bullet, the VTG or FRC measures the ga that gas volume. Uh, the PM or is plotted against a simultaneous plethysmographic measure during respiratory effort against a closed shutter to measure the transthoracic gas volume or the FRC. Mm. FRC. Okay. And the same relationship between the alveolar and the plethysmograph during free breathing to measure the airway resistance where airflow is uh, related to the alveolar pressure. No, uh, alveolar pressure, yes. <laughs> because the shutter is closed while all the measurements are made, mouth pressure equals the alveolar pressure. These oscillations in mouth pressure and box pressure uh, or lung volume appear on the oscilloscope as a closed loop. Measurement of the slope of this loop is used to determine the volume of the gas in the lungs at the time of the shutter closure, that is the transthoracic gas volume. So, this is the uh, mouth pressure. See, you. Uh, this is a uh, chamber, okay. A person is seated, seated here, mm. okay, and he's asked to breathe. So there is a lung, you know that, and whenever he breathes inside, the pressure change. It's a, since it's a closed chamber, there is a pressure change, and it causes a uh, change in the pressure transducer, which is in the box, and that causes a change. And when he exhales, uh, there's, uh, that is simultaneously reflex. And also there is a, a mouthpiece uh, transducer which helps during inspiration and expiration uh, the pressure changes. And when the shutter is closed, he is asked to pant uh, over the closed shutter. And so that indicates the pressure changes in the alveoli. So this is what has happened. When, you, when the patient breathes, uh, and suddenly the shutter is closed, there is a change in the pressure and change in the volume. Uh, the, uh, when he inspires, uh, the volume in the lungs increases 
and uh, pressure decreases. So, and uh, si simultaneous looping uh, is asked to pan, he is asked to pan and pan, and uh, there is change in the volume and uh, pressure, and this loop is used to determine the FRC. So, the, why do we need, uh, what is the clinical interpretation? Increased FRC, it can be used to gas trapping or cystic fibrosis. Decreased uh, FRC, it is abnormal alveolar development, reduced recoil of chest wall, atelectasis, reduced uh, compliance. It's a useful tool in evaluating the lung volume studies in the uh, RV by TLC. So, this is the same, uh, which helps in the differentiation between air trapping, restrictive pattern and hyperinflation. Hyperinflation marker is uh, FRC and it is increased and uh, residual volume is increased and the total lung capacity is also increased in hyper. Whereas in restrictive, total lung capacity decreased, residual volume is also decreased and FRC is also decreased. And uh, in air trapping, uh, residual volume is increased and, and uh, vital capacity is also decreased. The measurement of airway resistance by body plethysmograph. It is also the same way as uh, we discussed. But in this one, he is asked to pan in an open shutter. The shutter doesn't close. And so it helps in the measurement of the airway resistance. In this, uh, there is a formula. Uh, the pressure changes in the mouth by change in the flow, which causes, uh, which helps in the determination of the airway resistance. This is what has happened. When he asked to breathe uh, in a closed shutter, uh, no, first he is asked to breathe in an open shutter. Okay, and the uh, arrows and the loop is in this direction. And suddenly the shutter is closed. So, and uh, the it is in this direction. And uh, the angle between this is used for the measurement of the airway resistance. Okay. See, these are the various technical issues when during normal breathing, it is like this and uh, during uh, panning too slow, it's, it is very slow and if it is uh, panning very big, uh, the loop is also big and similarly in other patterns. What, what is the indication for airway resistance? It helps in the evaluation of the airflow limitation beyond spirometry. Uh, it helps in the determination of the response to bronchodilators which we are giving as a medication. Is it improving the patient or not? Determination of the bronchial hyperactivity. Differentiating between the types of obstructive lung diseases having similar spirometric configuration. Following the course of the disease and response to treatment. There are however some sources of error. In patients with COPD or asthma, values of the FRC obtained by body plethysmograph may be high because of the pressure differences between the mouth and the alveolar during panning across the narrow airways. Other some sources is pressure recorded at the mouth during shutter closure of the airway underestimate the changes in the alveolar pressure. And there is overestimation of TLC using body plethysmograph appears to be greatest in patients in whose FEV1 is less than 30% in whom considerable areas of the lungs are poorly ventilated, usually due to obstructive airway. Basically, there are three measures, the methods for measuring airway resistance. One is the esophageal, impulse oscillometry and body plethysmograph. The contraindications which we have to know before doing this, one is the mental confusion, muscle incoordination patients, they are not allowed claustrophobic, if there is presence of any O2 devices, continuous oxygen therapies or IV lines. So this is a basic, basic, basic summary of how you proceed. You keep the patient in this chamber and you ask that uh, patient to take a normal breath. So there is a normal breath like this. Okay? And suddenly he is asked to pan in an open shutter. Okay? Uh, he is asked to pan in an open shutter. That is used for the measurement of the airway resistance. Suddenly the shutter is closed. Okay? And so when there is closed shutter, he is asked to uh, pan uh, in a closed shutter. That is used for the measurement of FRC. And then he is asked to take a deep breath and expire slowly. So in all this, the taking a deep breath, we will get the total lung capacity and uh, recital volume, functional recital capacity and the airway resistance. And uh, it's all determined by the lens. This is a small graph which helps in the determination. So I hope everyone you understood what I 
told and any doubts or any clarification you can ask me comment in this comment box so thank you